All right, great. So I'm recording right now, and I'm Drew Wallace, obviously, from uh, NWA3D, and Linda, right? Yes. Um, so, um, so what we're going to do today is we're going to kind of walk through the whole process of 3D printing and the different steps and like how it looks. And then we're going to talk about specific troubleshooting things that might come up that have to do with this printer. So um, before we get too much more into it, do you guys have any 3D printers like at school? Have you seen a 3D printer going before or is this your first one? Uh, one print, and I have two uh, Dremel 3D printers that our tech coordinator got. He's okay. been having trouble with them. That's how I get them going and whatever. So when I saw this at the conference, I had some money in my account, and I'm like, I'm getting this one and getting help. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, that's what we're here for. So we have unlimited training and unlimited support for life. So um, if your tech coordinator wants to get the, his own training um, with it or her own training, then just let us know because um, we can totally do that. That comes with the printer. So um, if it moves uh, around in different classrooms or where it's going to go, um, it we want to make sure that they're always working in the classroom. And it also has – a one year warranty that literally can't be voided. So it's no questions asked, which means if it falls off the table and breaks, or like I talked about students cutting the wires and stuff like that, all of that is covered if that unfortunately happens. So um, we're, we wanna make sure that it's gonna work in the classroom um, and that you're gonna be using it and integrating your curriculum too. So we also have like lesson plan help and stuff like that to help you come up with ideas. On one, of the, one of the prongs was crooked when I got it. I was able to get it so it worked. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, can you give me one second? Sure. Sorry about that. I'm the only one in the shop today, and uh, we just had our neighbor walk in here. So, <laughs> right. yeah, we uh, it's like when it gets close to Christmas, everybody's got stuff going on, so it's like in and out, in and out. So, um, you know how that is. How much more time do you guys have? Pardon me? How much more time do you all have before your break? We get out uh, two weeks. Two weeks? Oh, wow. Yeah, so like uh, like middle of next week, something like that, or you guys got to go through the rest uh, of it? We actually go till Thursday. Oh, wow. Week. Yeah. You count down the days? <laughs> I only work a couple of days a week. It's not bad. Oh, yeah, that's right. You're only like Monday and Tuesday. Yeah, nice. Um, so uh, with 3D printing, there are basically four big steps that um, go through the whole process. And this is the same on whatever 3D printer you're going to use. Um, and those four steps, uh, the first one is going to be design. And that's going to be the biggest and the most difficult step and the one that's going to take the longest. Um, and there are lots of awesome programs out there that students can design on. Uh, we recommend Tinkercad as a place to start. So Tinkercad.com works in, on Chromebooks. It works on iPads. Um, excuse me. And it's awesome. Um, you can do tons of different uh, things with it. And uh, it might look like it's made just for kids, but you can actually do some really advanced stuff. So we have actually colleges and high schools that use it too um, to start off with because you're basically moving 3D shapes around and then combining them and subtracting them to create all your different types of, of forms and shapes. And that's why um, we have that digital caliper that came with the toolkit too. So your students can prototype something, um, you know, like a robotic part or maybe even a doorstop or something like that. And then they can make it to those exact specifications in Tinkercad and then 3D print it to be those exact specifications, all the way down to a tenth of a millimeter. So you can do some really accurate stuff and some really accurate prototyping with it. Um, another one that's great is Onshape. And then when uh, like your students get really used to doing Tinkercad, then we recommend like checking out Onshape or uh, SketchUp. Works really good too. And, and all those are good for uh, for elementary and, and middle school. Um, and what grade does did y'all school go up to? We're K twelve. Okay. District, so we actually have. One super big building, and that's elementary on one side, middle in the middle, and then high school. So awesome. all can access this material. Oh, okay, that's great. Yeah. So the high schoolers then they can use um, the SketchUp, and they can start off with Tinkercad too, and they can use SketchUp, and then even Fusion 360 um, is a really advanced program that that we recommend for junior high and high school. And all those programs are free um, for education, and both uh, Chrome on, on Chromebooks, uh, OnShape and Tinkercad both work without having to install anything. Um, uh, and you can just OnShape.com and Tinkercad.com, and they're they're both awesome. Um, I don't know if you guys have Chromebooks or iPads, but yeah, we're um, and you have to have a Windows or a Mac, though, to run um, SketchUp and Fusion 360, so just so you guys know. Um, so once the students have that model designed, then they're going to put that in another program, and that program is called a slicer um, that's actually going to code it for the printer. And you don't have to know how to code to do that. Um, and it's easy as just like loading an email attachment and then downloading it again. Um, so with that, uh, that program, 
that, that slicer is basically going to go layer by layer by layer by layer what the 3D printer is going to do. Um, and you have to make sure that that slicer is set up to the correct settings for your printer, which I'm going to walk you through here in a second too. And, and that's called Cura is the one that we use. And that is actually on the SD card. Um, and then once you have it sliced in Cura, then you're going to transfer that to the printer itself. And you can do that through USB if you want, but we recommend always using the SD cards uh, because then they don't have to be in the same location as uh, the printer. So you can have the printers in your library and then the, you know, they could be doing their work in science or in English or something like that. And then they can bring their, their prints in and then just log into Tinkercad in the library and then download their model and then print it right there. So they don't have to be working in the same location. And it also doesn't have to be tethered to a computer the whole time either. So if somebody signs out from the computer or the program gets closed on accident or the computer falls asleep, all those things will cause the print to fail. Um, so by having it running from the SD card, it'll run autonomously and it's a lot more reliable to do that. Um, so you just save it on that little SD card, and then the fourth step, and the final step, is you just select the print from that little SD card um, by just saying print from SD and then picking your model. So you're going to uh, create your model in Tinkercad, and then slice it in Cura, and then transfer it to the printer using the micro SD card, and then printing it from the printer using the screen control um, on the printer itself. So um, let's go ahead and grab um, the little micro SD card, and then install Cura on your computer. And our tech coordinator just joined us. Andrew oh, hey, how's it going? Okay. You want me to go ahead and download Cura, you said? Uh, it's actually on the SD card, so you don't have to download it. Um, if you want to just put the SD card, um, the little black uh, SD card reader, looks yeah, like this. Yeah, we've got it. It's plugged in. Okay, awesome. Yeah, in the folder called Cura, that's where you'll find uh, the um, version of Cura that we're going to use. So 15.04.6. Yep, that's it. And there are newer versions of Cura that you can use. Um, and we, uh, they've been updating Cura so quickly, though, that we haven't uh, updated our user manual to it yet. Every time we get it ready, um, Cura comes out with a new version the next week. So um, you can download the newest version. That works great, too, um, especially if you want to have it tethered. Um, it's way easier to use the newer version of Cura to use that. But we're going to use the old version right now because that's what your user manual um, corresponds with. And you can go back and reference it, everything that we're talking about. So I don't want to train you with something that then you don't have all the support materials and stuff for. And, and both versions work great. Yep. Yep, go ahead and install, and then you'll walk through all of the uh, all of the different things. You can do default everything until it gets to where it says choose new machine. Okay. Or start new, like first time run wizards, something like that. Go ahead and plug in the um, printer or just wait? Uh, we, we can wait to do that. Okay. Like I said, I hadn't done anything. <laughs> yeah, no, that's totally fine. Yeah, we'll get Cura all set up first. Um, and this is actually the first big troubleshooting step, too, is making sure that Cura is all set up properly. So um, if your students log into different um, accounts, they'll have to set up Cura the first time they log into that account um, to make sure that it's set. So it's, very, it's profile specific. So the first time, it'll remember all the settings, but you have to set it up the first time. And we recommend having Cura on like one computer to start with, but then all the students will just use that same computer until they kind of get the hang of it. And then they can put it on their own computers if you want or multiple computers in, uh, in your class. Now, right now, we're just about installing it on this one laptop that's going to be on the desktop. Okay. Yeah, and, we get, and uh, there's a video that walks all the way through how to set up Cura. Well, I'm going to share this video with you, too. Um, and then it's, it's in-depth in the user manual that's also on the SD card, um, every one of these steps that we're going to go through. And then you can, you can call us. You can uh, fill out a support request. However you want to get a hold of us, we can help you make sure you get it all set up correctly. What kind of machine do I have? Okay, awesome. So let me share my screen with you. So you probably see, whoop, let me get this out of the way. Like this, add new machine wizard? Like this? Yes. Okay, awesome. So we're going to click other. That's the machine because we build it here uh, in Arkansas. And then next. 
And then Mendel is the operating system, M-E-N-D-E-L, right here. And then next, and then finish, woohoo! But there are two more things we have to do, so we're not completely done. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna set all these settings up um, for our printer. And some of these too might also help um, the Dremel as well to make sure that the settings are, are going a little bit slower and turn the temperature up a little bit that we're gonna kinda walk through a little bit. So some of these might help you out um, with the Dremel as well. Um, the first thing is the layer height. So that is how close together each one of the layers are. So um, this can go all the way down to a tenth of a millimeter per layer, which is gonna be the highest quality, and that's also 100 microns is another way to say that. Um, and then the lowest quality is 300 microns. So that, that just means that they're a little bit farther away. So if they're farther away, it's gonna print a lot faster, but it's not gonna look as nice. Um, and the highest quality is gonna be 0 0.1. So we normally print at 0 0.2, but if you wanna print at 0 0.1 or 0 0.3, feel free to. Um, and when you change it, you'll see this over here is moving, and that is your slice. Um, and that, that is how long your model is gonna take to print. You'll see every time we change one of these, that, feet, that will change. Did you get it? Oh, I'm trying to get back to my screen. Oh yeah, oh, uh, hit escape. That'll make the full screen kind of go away. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and you can move me around, get me out of the way. <laughs> okay, I'm at point two. Okay. okay. Yeah, and then the shell thickness, that is the thickness of the outside part of our model. So that's the, the thick part right here. Um, and two shells is what we recommend to always start with, but if you wanted to make it even stronger, you can just keep adding more shells and you just have to have them a multiple of four. So um, two shells is 0 0.8 because our nozzle size is 0 0.4. So um, those are the shell thickness on the outside part. So if you wanted it to be stronger than that, like if you're going to make a part that's going to hold something else or something along those lines, you can make it 1.2 or or, uh, or 1.6 and, and, and make it pretty durable and really, really strong. And even after, with PLA, you can make some really strong parts. Um, and as I mentioned, the nozzle size, we're going to change that right here to 0 0.4. And then you'll see... It's gonna go red when there's a problem and it can't do something, and yellow means oh, I might not be able to, and clear is where you wanna be when you're printing stuff. Okay. And then the bottom and top thickness, you can change that to whatever you want, but we usually keep it about the same as the shell thickness. And that's literally how thick it's gonna be at the top and the bottom of our model. And then the fill density, that's the amount of material that's filled inside of your model, and that's called infill. And that's basically a crosshatch pattern that's gonna fill inside each one of uh, your models. So usually five to 20% is good. And the smaller your model is, probably the more dense you want it to be to make sure that it's gonna uh, be more durable and it's not gonna break. Uh, you can go to hollow if you, wanna, if you have a design that doesn't have to have supports inside of it um, to save some material. Or you can go completely solid if you want to, but um, most of the time the, the most solid we ever go is like 80%. And that's still like really dense uh, infill pattern that's inside there. Um, and then that can just help you save a lot of materials without having to make it completely solid. Mm -hmm. And then the print speed, we're going to go ahead and leave that at 50. And we recommend that for all uh, material extrusion 3D printers. Um, so it, whatever type of 3D printer you have, we recommend going 50 or slower. Because if it goes too much faster than that, the way that this technology works is it's going to lay down of the layers, layer by layer by layer by layer. And uh, uh, when it's doing that, if it's trying to go too fast before the layer beneath it has cooled completely or stuck completely, it can actually peel up that layer underneath it when it's trying to lay the next one down. So if it's trying to go really fast, it can cause uh, problems and knock the whole model loose or make it to where the layers aren't quite fused together so there's like little small gaps in them and stuff like that. So we always recommend going to 50, but if you wanna have a really high quality print, you could go all the way down to 30 millimeters a second if you want. We just don't recommend going over 50. Because this one can print a whole lot faster than that, um, but it, it could, it's a lot less accurate when, it, when that happens, like any 3D printer. And then the printing temperature is 220. Um, so the type of material that you have, uh, the type of PLA, uh, it is a special type of PLA that actually has a material in it that makes it more malleable than regular PLA. So it prints at a little bit hotter temperature. And this can also help um, on other 3D printers too because um, a lot of PLAs and a lot of 3D printers, um, sometimes they try to print on the low end of the heat scale. And when it's trying to print at a lower temperature, uh, the, 
extruder, which is the part that pushes the filament through, that gear is actually working really hard to push it through the nozzle. And that can cause clogs and stuff like that too, and can cause it to grind and make like a half moon pattern ground into the side of the filament, stuff like that. So by turning that temperature up, that helps to, uh, to fix a lot of that. And then the bed temperature is gonna be zero. Because you do not have to have a heated bed with uh, this type of printer. Um, and that's why we have this lock build surface too, which helps the materials to stick to it. And with PLA, you don't really need to have a heated bed, which is why we love to print with PLA too, because not only is it biodegradable, but it's really easy to print with. And you can use any of the same filament um, that you use with the Dremel on this, on this printer too. So there's no proprietary filament or anything, no proprietary anything on this. Um, and as I mentioned before, like you literally cannot void the warranty even if you cut all the wires. <laughs> Still covered. Um, and then the support type, we're going to go ahead and click everywhere on the support. So if it ever needs supports, it will just automatically generate that. And the reason that we do that is a lot of times a student might make a model um, like a door frame or something like that where it needs to have supports inside of there. But if there aren't supports, it might just collapse and turn into a pile of spaghetti. And students might think that that's the, the problem of like their model or problem with the printer or something like that. But it might just be that it needed to print with supports. Um, and then those supports, you can just pop out with some pliers um, or use the clippers that come in the toolkit um, to get all of those off of there at the end. Um, so we just have that to everywhere, but if you will have a model that doesn't have to have supports, I'll show you here in a second um, how to check that out and how to see that. And then the platform adhesion, if you're having trouble with stuff sticking, you can turn on what's called brim. And normally if something isn't sticking right, it means that the bill plate isn't level, which we're gonna cover here in a second. But brim will actually act like suction cups around the outside part of your model. So if you're having trouble with warping or with stuff not sticking very well and it is level, It'll move those, those lines around the edge that will actually hold the model down and prevent it from like warping up and pulling up as, it, as the, the filament cools. So if you want to turn that on, you can. And the last thing that we're going to change is this diameter. And we're going to make this 1.75. And that is the same that it says on the side of your filament too, of your PLA, either toner or push past plastic PLA. And then these are all the settings that are set up for it. And then now we're going to set the size to make sure that we put things inside the correct uh, build area for this printer. And this is how big it prints. So this whole box, this is the size that it prints. So your entire build area is that blue build plate all the way up to four inches tall. So it's five by six by four inches. And that's what we're going to set right now. So we're going to click machine and then machine settings. Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. And then we're going to change these settings right here where the width, depth, and height. So we're going to change this first one, this width. We're going to go ahead and change that to 125. And then the depth is going to be 150. And the height is going to be 100. And then we're going to uncheck this box right here. So this is about five inches by six inches by four inches, just about. And then this is a screenshot that's on the SD card too. These are all the settings that you have to set up for Cura. So you can see the machine steps right here um, with how big it is and the unchecking the heated bed. And then these settings over here on the side um, for the quality, fill, speed, support, filament, and machine. So um, this screenshot is on the, the uh, SD card. So if you have students that are setting it up, they can go and reference this. Um, when they log into their account for the first time. Mm -hmm. And then we'll go ahead and click OK. And then now, this is set to our, our size. And you can see it kind of shrunk down a little bit. So this is Cura. Cura is all done. So uh, we talked about those steps where the first step, you're going to make a model. And then the second step, you're going to slice it in Cura. Well, that's what we're going to do right now. So I'm going to go ahead and pull in another model. And you can use that robot that's in there too if you want. Um, or you can use the model that's on the SD card. So I'm going to go ahead and click Load. And then I'm going to go to the SD card. Uh, and then, whoop, this SD card didn't have it, Never mind. So I'll go ahead and go to um, my SD card copy on my computer. Uh, and then go ahead and open up my SD card. And then STL files is what we need. So anything that is a .STL or .OBJ is going to work best. So that, those are the two file types that um, you want to have your students export their 3D files as. And as long as it's a .STL or .OBJ, you're normally going to have luck with it. And if not, as I mentioned, just let us know, because we're here with unlimited support to make sure that, that we can help you out. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the dice and load that, and then click Open. 
So here, this is going to take 14 minutes, and it tells you exactly how much material it's going to use as well. And if you hold the right mouse button, you can kind of rotate this around. You can uh, use the scroll wheel to kind of zoom in and out to, to see exactly where it's going to be. And you can add as many models in here as you want, as long as they're yellow. Because if they turn gray, they're outside of the build area. So I'm going to go ahead and click load again. And maybe I'll load the, uh, the keychain in here too. Why not? So you can put multiple student models inside of this space. You can also change the size of your model. So if you're not uh, using something as a prototype and using the digital caliper, you can scale stuff right here to different sizes. So I can say to max if I wanted to, and then that'll make it the biggest. Or you can actually click on the model and you can, you can move these little cubes here to shrink stuff down and move it around. I can click and move them around right here. You can also click the scale right here and one is 100, but 0 0.5 is 50% the size. So you can change everything around. And you can see your time is gonna change up here too, and this is within about 10 minutes of how long it's actually going to take. So that's another reason why we really like Cura, because it's really accurate. <coughs> Excuse me. So thanks. So this is gonna take 18 hours and 41 minutes to make this, which is totally fine. You can print stuff for multiple days on this printer. I can totally do that. Um, and the, uh, you can also rotate your models too by clicking rotate, and then rotating stuff side to side. So I can move this around and then drag these to rotate them. And as long as they turn yellow, then they're print. If they're gray, it will completely ignore it when it does that slice. So you can move stuff around too, and this also helps to make sure that you have the most area touching the build plate too, because if I have this kind of lifted up like this, it's gonna print that support underneath there, and that's what that support everywhere is. And that's what we're gonna go look at right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this one. Let's go ahead and scale this down a little bit too so it doesn't. It's not so, so gigantic. There we go. It'll be a little bit less. And then we can actually look at the layer view to see exactly what it's going to print. So now it's only three hours. So we'll click view mode and then the layers. And it, you can see layer by layer by layer what each individual part is going to print. And you can see the red is the shell. That's the outside. And then this turquoise, that is the support structure. So you can see that right there. And if you drag this down, so 256 layers, but if you click on this and drag it down, you can see exactly what each individual layer is going to do. So see here, that's that cross pat pattern that I talked about. So that is the fill density right here. So if I change this to like 5%, it's not going to have nearly as much infill inside of it. So it's going to cut way down on the amount that we use. And it's just loading right here. That's why it's just kind of taking a second. So you can check this view out sometimes if you want to see if something is going to have um, if it needs supports or if you're going to print it with supports, because you want to make sure that you have as much area touching the bill plate uh, as possible if you're going to print something. So I'm going to go ahead and click view mode and go back to normal. Kind of move these around and try to get them kind of close to the center. Usually helps too. So it won't get over and like bump one of the clips that are over here on the sides. And wherever you're putting it inside of this crosshatch pattern, that's where it's going to print on the printer too. So if I put this over here in this front corner, it's going to print right over here in this front corner. And then when the slice is done, now we're ready to save it to our SD card. So you might, yours might say SD right here. And if it does, you just save it. When you click on that, it just saves it straight to the SD card. But you can also click uh, right click and save wherever you want, or you can say save toolpath and save wherever you want as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to SD card and we'll say six-sided dice and keychain. And then go ahead and say save. And it's saved to the SD card and that's the G code file that we need. So we're gonna go ahead and eject this, and then this is that transfer step, that third step, where we're gonna transfer it to our printer itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and eject it. And then I've got it ejected. I'm gonna take this little SD card, and you can take yours out too with the robot if you want, or uh, any other model that you sliced, and then put this in the front of the printer. So this is gonna go right here in the front of the printer, right here in the bottom. So I'm going to take my SD card, and it goes right here in this little SD card slot that's underneath the knob right there. So you're going to slide it in there, and then push it in until it clicks. So you can go ahead and load it in your, uh, in your printer. And it helps to keep the SD cards inside of the, uh, the printer or inside of the reader uh, so they don't get lost. So I just need to just click the SD card and it will go straight there? 
Uh, yes, you can click SD card. If you click SD card, it'll save it right to it. Okay. And then just eject the SD card and then put it in the front of the printer. Wow. Need to be a little kid. Little hand. There we go. It just clicks in there and clicks out. Get it? Okay. So then now, if we had our filament loaded, um, all we'd have to do is plug the printer in and then literally just choose your print from the button, and then the robot will just start printing. But we have to first get it ready because we just took it out of the box. So we got to make sure that we load all the filament, check to make sure it's level, uh, and everything else too. So uh, now we're ready to check some troubleshooting. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make sure that nothing has come loose on it and nothing got broken or damaged in shipping. Or if you're moving it from classroom to classroom, nothing came unplugged. So go ahead and check the plugs and make sure that none of these are unplugged on any of the motors. So we have the X and the X switch. And we have the Y, which is right back here, and the Y switch. And the Z is the up-down motor. That's right here. And the Z switch is in here. And then the E is this one right there. Now, the E was unplugged when I got it. It actually had a prong bent, but I was able to plug it in. Oh, it was unplugged when you got it? Uh, yeah. Actually, one of the prongs was bent. Did you get it bent back? I did get it bent back, and it, it was able to go in. So I'm hoping okay. everything's bent there. <laughs> yeah, some, sometimes like in the packaging that can happen. So uh, if it gets bent back though, it should be fine. Okay. Well, yeah. If not, we're about to find out. So, <laughs> and then we'll also check and make sure that this moves freely back and forth. And see, mine's it's clicking right here because this plate pushed a little bit too far. So I need to push this plate over a little so it'll move back and forth here. Because if it's too close to this edge, it's going to bump. So you want to make sure this moves back and forth easily. And you also want to make sure that this moves back and forth easily too, and that the belts are tight and nothing's broken or loose on these idler pulleys. Does it look good? on that to get it down closer to the end. Ours is way up in the air. Oh yeah, that's fine. If yours is in the air, that's totally fine. Yeah, because we're gonna fix that here in a second. Okay. Right. You just want to make sure that's not broken and that these belts are tight. So, they look good. Yep, I think they're good. Awesome. Okay, so that's the first machine integrity step that you want to check on to make sure that the machine itself is all working properly. And that all looks great. So um, now what we're going to do is we are going to level the bill plate. And this is the step that's, that's probably, I would say, the most complicated with uh, running a 3D printer. No matter what type of 3D printer you use, there's no auto leveling feature that works properly. Um, and this one, the reason that we like it so much is because the students are going to be the ones that are doing all the work. So they're going to be leveling it from scratch. Um, and what we're going to do is we are going to actually use a piece of paper to test the tension of the nozzle. So that's what we're going to, that's what we're going to do. So if you want to grab a piece of paper, any piece of paper will do. And then fold that in half, that's what we're going to uh, be using to test the tension. Um, so go ahead and plug the printer in too, and then get a piece of scrap paper. And it should be level, it should be level fine. We just like to go over all these steps just to make sure that you know how to do it. And this is something that you'll only have to do if it messes up. So like I mentioned, if it, if it warps um, or if it knocks the model loose, that means that it, the nozzle's too far away um, and it's not sticking those layers close together. If it's too close, it's gonna dig into the bill plate or dig trenches in your nozzle because the nozzle's too close. So you're trying to get a happy medium where the filament is coming out at a 90 degree angle from the nozzle. And that's what we're gonna set right now. The Dremel PLA there? Yeah. 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 I got three. I got blue, yellow, and a red with those. Where did he go? Did 
get it plugged in? Yes, yeah. yes. Okay, awesome. So now what we're going to do is we are going to auto home it. So go ahead and tap the button and then move it to where it says setup and then tap that button and then move it to where it says auto home. And that's going to move the X, Y, and Z to zero. And we're going to adjust the Z by moving the bill plate and using the little bolts on the bottom of the bill plate to move everything around. So it's going to move to this front corner. And that's also why you want to make sure when you have this build plate clicked, uh, clipped on there, it's clipped on on this side. So this clip doesn't get in the way of the nozzle because this whole build plate, it comes loose. This whole thing comes off. And then you can pop your prints off by flexing this a little bit. And you can also get underneath it easier with the spatula to be able to pop it off. Um, and having that flex plate helps a lot. So um, this build service replaces uh, tape. You don't have to use hairspray or glue or anything else like that. It's uh, a porous on a microscopic level, specifically designed for um, uh, PLA filament to stick to it. So uh, we'll just clip this on here, and you got to make sure it's clipped, but the clips aren't in the way of the nozzle when they're moving around. So let me know when it stops moving. Okay, it stopped moving. Okay, awesome. So now what we're going to do is we're going to tap the button again. And then we're going to disable the motor so we can move them around. So we're going to go to where it says setup again, and then disable motors. And that disables the stepper motor so we can move them and move them around. So we're going to move this to the front corner right here. Just like that. And then we're going to grab our folded uh, sheet of paper. So any piece of paper that we, that we got, and then fold it. Hey, we're a hot dog, however you want to fold it. And then that's what we're going to use. So I'm going to also be picking my printer up because I want to show you the different parts. But you want to leave yours flat on the table because when you pick it up, it can actually move the Z-axis around and give you an inaccurate leveling. Um, so I'm going to pick mine up so you can see it. Um, and inside here, you'll see there is the nozzle. And we need to fit this piece of paper between the nozzle and the build service. So you should be able to slide it in there, but it might be too close like mine is. And if it is... Just squeeze this with your with your finger and thumb and then fit the paper underneath there so we can slide it underneath while it's squeezed okay. and then by squeezing it you can kind of fit everything under there so it's under there like that you get it mm -hmm. awesome. so what we're gonna do is we're gonna test this tension to move it so mine it barely moves and if yours is really really loose then that means it's too far away. You want it to move and drag, but not so much that it buckles the paper and gets stuck. So it's almost like having um, your toothpaste too close to your toothbrush or too far away from your toothbrush. You want to get a good bead on the top of your toothbrush. If it's too far away, it's just going to go everywhere, just like this. Will, the filament will just go everywhere because it's not going to be able to stick the layers together. And if it's too close, then the layers are going to be too close and it's going to dig into everything. So we're going to adjust that by this little bolt underneath here. So if you're looking at the printer, if you turn this to the left or counterclockwise, it's going to pull it down, which is going to actually make it looser on top. And if you turn it to the right or clockwise, it's going to push it up and actually make it tighter on top. So I'm going to turn mine a little bit to the left and then test. And little increments work best. And then a little bit more to the left and then test. There we go. Until you feel it dragging and feel that vibration of it dragging quite a bit. So you want to do small instrument increments and then test it between each one. So let me know when you can feel that paper dragging above that nut right there. I feel it dragging now. Okay. Okay, awesome. So now we're going to try to get the same amount of consistency of dragging above this nut right here. So we're going to push this whole thing over. And then we're going to test the paper right here too. So mine's a little bit close. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this a little bit to the left again. There we go, until we feel it dragging about the same amount of tension. And the trick is to kind of test it, and then move this a little bit, and then test it, and then move this a little bit, and then test it. Did you have to pull a little bit, or just smooth but just feel the drag uh feel the drag like right before it starts to buckle so um you you want to have quite a bit of tension on there um imagine like if you set the, the paper down and you had your fingernail on the paper and you're moving it and you could feel it moving on your fingernail like that's the amount of tension that you want to have because 
a folded sheet of paper is two tenths of a millimeter. And that's how far away we want the nozzle to be um, from the lock build surface. And that's why we use it. So we want it to be as close as possible to the paper. Okay, awesome. So now we're going to do the third one, which is the most tricky, and that's the one that's inside right here. So we'll have to move this to the inside and then test it there. And this one, see, mine's a little bit too close. Um, we can reach in underneath here and then turn this knob and then adjust it a little bit and then push it back and then test it and then pull it forward and then adjust a little bit because my fingers are too big to fit under there. And then push the whole thing back and then adjust it. You might have to push down on the bill plate to get the paper back underneath there, and that's okay too. See, mine's still a little bit too tight, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull it forward a little, and then adjust it, and then move it back, and then test it. There we go. Now it's the tension that we want it to be. So that's the trickiest one to get to. There you go. Yeah, there so you go. Okay, too much. Move it back or push down, get another natural light. That's tighter than the other was. Yeah. yeah. And that, that's part of the things that's tricky about it is getting it about the same consistency. Because if it's a little bit too far away or a little bit too close all the way around, it'll still print. Um, but if it's like glaringly wrong because there are three points of the triangle, when you, one of them is way too tight, then the other two will be too loose and vice versa. So um, it might look perfect on one side, but then you won't even see the filament coming out on the other. Go ahead, you can try so you can get to. No, I'm here. Hard it to definitely do. takes some practice to like get that tension just right. I probably got way too loose. Loose or no, there, Sam. Too tight. Yeah. <laughs> and this is something, like I said, you won't have to do very often. Maybe once a month. Last year we had a school that they got their printer in October and then they didn't even level it till that next April. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Awesome. So you can go ahead and pull the paper out. And then that is leveling. So we know that it's level. Um, but the last thing that we have to do is before it can print anything, it has to have filament loaded in it. So that's the fourth big troubleshooting thing is dealing with filament issues. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to build this. We already did that. Cool. did that. You did? Okay, awesome. Okay. Woo! I got, so, I got that far in the manual. <laughs> oh, okay, awesome. Yeah, so I'll put mine together real quick. So if you want to get your filament and make sure that you get the plastic off like around the outside of it, um, and then get your filament ready to go. Then I'll build mine really quick. Okay. And then it'll sit on there um, just like the axle, uh, axle of a wheel. All right. So then we got our filament, like that. And you want to make sure that when you're not using the filament, you have it pulled through one of these holes in the side so it doesn't come uh, loose. Just like weed eater line or, uh, or fishing line, it'll get really tangled. And if it gets tangled and like woven, woven in and out of itself, it can get stuck and not feed into the printer right, and that can cause some problems. Okay. So to load and unload the filament, uh, you have to have the nozzle heated to be able to do that. Um, and we also want to be able to see to make sure that the filament is going through the printer. So if you have a clog, um, one of the best ways that you can get rid of it is by, by loading and unloading the filament several times. And I'm gonna walk you through those steps right now. But first, what we're gonna do is to load the filament and purge the other color out, we need to lift this up off of the bill plate a little bit. So there are two ways we can do that. You can either twist this bolt right here, but it's a little greasy, 
or you can use the controls on the screen right here. And to do that, we'll just tap this button and then go to where it says controls and then move axis and then one millimeter and then the Z is what we're gonna move because that's the up and down. And then just spin that to like 30 something. And then you'll see that's gonna raise that Z axis up. And that's also where you can move each one of the motors to make sure that they're all working properly if you ever wanted to. So this is gonna lift itself up. And then now we'll be able to load the filament through. But the filament is gonna load into this hole right here. And you're gonna squeeze this lever to be able to feed it through there. But before we do that, we wanna clip any melted stuff that might be on the end of it off. And kind of clip it at a point too. And that helps to feed it in there easier. And that also helps to make sure that you're not just pushing old gunky filament back into your printer because that can also cause problems and issues. So we want to clip that ending and then take it out of the hole in the side right here so it freely will, will spool in there. And then we're going to feed that through this hole and then through this part right here and all the way through this white tube until it won't go anymore. So we're going to put it right here and then we're going to squeeze this and then push. And you might have to wiggle it a little bit and then push and push and push all the way through until it won't go anymore. And you'll see it going all the way through the red tube, um, the red filament going through this white tube right here, all the way through until it won't go anymore. And that goes all the way to the end of it. So let me know when you got it all the way through there. So we go, okay. Okay, it. awesome. Can we go back through to how to feed it? Right here. Yes, yeah, right here. Yeah, so you squeeze this little lever and then feed it right through here and then all the way through this white tube. And then keep pushing it until it won't go anymore. And then we have the filament so it's feeding in like this. So now we're going to go ahead and heat the nozzle up. And this is a way that you can be able to purge it and actually push out a clog and also make sure that it's fully loaded and the nozzle is primed. So every time you change the filament, we recommend doing this. So go ahead and tap the button. And then uh, when you tap the button, you'll go to setup, and then you're gonna see these two features right here. So preheat PLA and preheat soft pull. Preheat PLA is what we're gonna use right now to load it, and preheat soft pull is what you'll use to unload it. So go ahead and tap preheat PLA, and then I'll tell you about soft pull. So you'll see right here is the temperature that it's heating up to, and then the temperature it's currently at. Okay. And the soft pull, that's what you wanna do when you take the filament out. And if you take the filament out, and this works on any 3D printer at 100 degrees, it will actually take it out at a semi-solid state and it'll pull out gunk and stuff that might be in the end of the nozzle. So you can do that on any 3D printer. You can just heat it up to where it's preheated and then you can just watch it. And the soft pull, when it gets to 100 degrees, then remove the filament. Um, in this case, if you set the preheat soft pull, it will set the temperature at 100 degrees and it'll heat up to that point so you can pull the filament out. And if you are having issues with a clog or something like that, um, then you can just do a soft pull back and forth um, to be able to do a soft pull and then heat it up all the way and then push more filament through and, and tell, you see the filament coming out the end. They kind of go back and forth between um, purging the nozzle using preheat PLA and then doing soft pull to pull it out. And that will get 99% of the clogs that you have. And you also have a little filament unclogging tool that comes with it as well, which is that's that little wire that comes uh, with your printer. And these, they don't clog very much though, because they have what's called a Bowden extruder, which means that it has this large heat sink that's far away from where the gearing mechanism is. So that cuts way down on the amount of clogs and stuff that you're gonna get. Um, and if you ever feel compelled to like take this apart, um, this has to be put back together in a very particular way. So if you think that you have to take it apart because it's a really serious clog, just contact us and, and we'll help you take it apart if we need to because we want to make sure that you get it back um, uh, hooked up correctly. <laughs> but normally by doing the, uh, the, the pushing the preheat PLA all the way through and then doing soft pulls and back and forth, that will normally clear like 99% of clogs. And especially if you every time change the filament using the preheat PLA feature, then that's like changing the oil in a car. And it just helps to keep that, keep that nozzle nice and clear. And you see my temperature now is almost up to 220. We're super close. And then when it gets to 220, we're actually gonna push more filament through. And you can do this two ways. You can either do it the way that, um, that we move this up and down, but I'm gonna show you the manual way, which is where um, we'll really like push it through and use some force to push it through there. So um, it's almost there to 220. Yeah, we're there. What, what you're gonna do is you're literally just gonna push more filament through. So 
219, that's close enough, we're one degree away. Um, where you're gonna squeeze this and then push the filament until you see it coming out of the end of the nozzle right here. So you'll see mine when I push it, now you can see that filament coming out. Okay. And the only part of this that gets hot is that nozzle. So this part doesn't get hot. It even has this protective shield around it here to where uh, this part right here is protected. And there's even uh, a uh, heat cover right here. So I'm touching this with my finger right now and I'm not getting burned. It has like some insulation on it and stuff. The only part that's really hot is that nozzle. So you always want to use tools like the tweezers or the clippers or the pliers to reach in and grab the filament. Because even though the filament cools right away, that nozzle is really hot. So we can pull that filament all out. And then we also want to make sure that our filament doesn't come untangled like this. So this came around here. We want to make sure that it freely unrolls because that can also cause clogs. There we go. So we have it on there. And then now, go ahead and unplug your printer. Okay. So the reason that I have you all do that uh, is because one of the most common ways that clogs happen, and what we've seen of, of ways that, that clogs happen with, uh, with uh, printing across the country is uh, filament gets left in the printer and the printer is heated up and it's not printing. So the best way to prevent that is to always just have it unplugged and off when it's not printing something. So if you have students change the filament out, just have them unplug the printer when they're done changing filament. So the students don't change the filament, then the bell rings and then they forget and then it stays on and heated all day because that filament will bake in there um, and it's PLA, so it's, it's made from corn. So just like leaving something in the oven too long, it's gonna bake and turn into like black carbon in the end of that nozzle. And we can help you get that clog out and by doing the soft pulls um, and purges, we can help, help you clear it out um, and things like that. But just to help prevent a lot of those, it just helps to have it just off when it's not printing. And you can leave the filament in it when it's off, it's totally fine too. Um, but that'll help you uh, make sure that you never leave it on and not printing. Because it can print for hundreds of hours straight because the filament is still moving through that funnel and pushing out more filament. So um, that's something that we just wanna keep uh, in mind. So now we're ready to print. So go ahead and plug it in. And then now, all we have to do to print that fourth step is to choose our print that we have on the SD card. So if the SD card's in there, we'll tap the button. And then if you take the SD card out while it's on, you'll go to refresh SD card, and that'll refresh it. And then we're gonna go to print from SD, and then you're gonna pick your file. So here's my six-sided dice and keychain right here that I made, whoop, right there on the top, and then just tap it. And then when you tap it, it's gonna automatically heat up to 220. It's gonna zero itself in the corner. And then it's gonna go and start printing. So you don't have to level it every time you print. Uh, you don't have to preheat it every time you print. The, the robot is gonna do all the work for you. And you wanna watch the first couple layers of when it's printing. Cause you wanna make sure those first couple layers stick. And if they're not sticking very well, it might be that the bill plates uh, uh, not level, that's normally the main cause. It's like 90% of stuff that can happen. It's because the bill plate's not quite level and it's just too far away or too close to where it needs to be. But you can also clean this bill tack with some alcohol as well or a little acetone on a rag and like wipe it down to make sure that there aren't any finger smudges and stuff like that on there. That can sometimes cause issues. And one thing that's a downside to the lock build is if it's leveled too close, it can be hard to remove the, the, the parts. So if that happens and it's really hard to remove or you have like filament stuck on here, then just twist each one of these knobs about a fourth of a turn looser and then print your model again and then let it go like the first two layers and then it when stop your print and then peel off those first two layers because it'll fuse the new filament to the old filament that's stuck on there. So um, that's the one downside is sometimes this sticks too well. And you can use the scraper and scrape off all that stuff too. Now on the print from SD, when we do that, mm -hmm. um, I see main refresh ultimaker robot underscore SUPP. Yeah, that's the, so that's the one that you, when you hit that's SD, the one? that's okay. the ultimaker robot, yeah. Okay. So just tap it. Yeah, because that's what it saves as automatically. Because oh, okay. that robot's just called ultimaker robot, because ultimaker is the company that makes Cura. Mm -hmm. And you can also watch it while it's printing too. And you can do tiny adjustments, which is called hot leveling, while it's printing. So you can make tiny adjustments to make sure that that filament's coming out at that 90 degree angle. So to make sure that it's coming out like it should be, you can make really small adjustments while it's printing. Just be careful to not get pinched while it's moving around. And you can make those tiny adjustments to make sure that it's sticking right. 
And then you can stop your print and restart it again. See, that? because that's what we're looking for. We're looking for a really good feed that's coming out all the way around. And if not, then that's when we can make those real small adjustments while it's printing. So you should see it heating up and then getting ready to print. 210. 210? Okay, awesome. It's super close there. Okay, we are at 220. Okay, awesome. So it will zero itself out and then it's going to start printing. See it moving? It's moving, yeah. Awesome. So it's going to print a line around the outside edge of your model, and that's going to knock off any extra filament. It's also going to show you that it's level or not, and it builds up pressure inside of the nozzle to make sure that the filament is feeding out right. So it's okay that it's going to make a line around the edges. It might look a little gunky because it gets all the little particles and stuff um, that are off of there. Lines up in there. How's it look? Does it look like it's sticking? Um, starting to, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, it takes a second to build up pressure, and that's that's why it makes that skirt. Okay. How about now? How's it look? Making the solid like square around. Well, the base. Is it building yeah. the robot? It could be, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, it's making the base of the robot. All right, so you guys leveled it right. Woohoo! Good job. So that's all I got today. Um, do you all have any questions for me? I know this was like a fire hose of information, and that's why we have all the support documentation and this video to go back and reference. Yeah. And you said our, this, the PLA like that we have using with our demo can be used on this one? Mm -hmm. As long as it's 1.75, which I'm like 99% sure that, that Dremel PLA is 1.75. So yeah, totally. Okay. And you can even use this with the Dremel too. Just feed it in through the side wall, like leave it on the stand and then feed it through the wall and then you can oh, okay. feed it through the top and use it too. Um, I didn't tell you that, but <laughs> they just want you to buy their stuff. So that's why they, they want you to put it inside of there. Now, I never really made a line around. Right. It's just, it just it's, started its build. I mean, it's, is that? It's praying the base kind of looks like. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, so maybe it, it just took a second to build up the pressure. That's maybe why the line didn't show up too much. Okay. All right. So that's okay. Got a little like just a, a glob up in yeah. the air before it started to build. Oh, yeah. yeah. Does it look good? Yeah, yeah I think good. it's looking good. Absolutely. Okay, awesome. Well, do you all have any more questions for me? I, I don't think I, don't I do so. until we just play with it. And yeah. just download, yeah. like you said, just download those other things, Tinkercad and – those kinds yeah. of things. And Tinkercad and Onshape, you just have to make accounts for us. So you don't have to download anything. They just work. So yeah, you can go to tinkercad.com and make an account. And, and I would definitely recommend starting at Tinkercad. Um, it's the okay. easiest one to, to get a grasp of. Okay. All, All right. right. Well, I, yeah, until I forget something, but you <laughs> said the video is going to be available to us, right? Absolutely. I'll send it to you later today. Um, okay. Let's get it uploaded to YouTube. And then we're here to help too for lesson plan help and um, any way that you want to integrate in your curriculum, help you come up with ideas. Um, we're here to help. So just let us know. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you, Thank you so much. Right. Okay. Good talking to you, Linda. Bye. Take care. Thank you. You too. Have a good Christmas. Thanks. You too.